Okay, uh, now this is uh, the, the third talk in, in this symposium, and let's welcome uh, Professor Kimi Lau of HKUSD uh, for her presentation. Thanks. Okay, thank you for coming. Um, we are going to talk about this um, theme-based project and cost-effective and equal-friendly LED system on the chip. This is what we focus on, is uh, how to integrate LED uh, with all the driver circuits and uh, a lot of the problems that currently that people are having now, and we are addressing these problems. We will minimize the cost and we'll minimize that, um, of course, the equal-friendly, that means the pollution. Um, we also will uh, um, reduce the size and also increase the lifetime. So these are our um, objective. So our team is uh, many uh, HKUST and also Professor Choi uh, from Hong Kong U. And uh, we are uh, working together on devices and we also have international collaborators. So this is uh, just some introduction of uh, how LED came along. It came really a long way from uh, maybe uh, a little over 10 years ago. But at the beginning, it was uh, mainly decorative. So you see this uh, large uh, billboards and also uh, um, the windows. And then uh, people are trying to incorporate them into automobiles. And these are, it's a, happening really slowly, but it is indeed happening. And then this is um, like in, indoor use, but again, at the beginning, it was still kind of uh, more decorative than lighting. So this is, um, again, this is another one as a more for architectural uh, decoration uh, outdoor at night, and you have been seeing this uh, for a long time now. But from the decoration to lighting, that is a very big step. And these installations of uh, solid state lighting, it only happened very recently in the, in the past few years. And, uh, in the Munich airport in uh, North America and uh, also in China. And this uh, China is uh, still mainly decorative and then there's uh, the street lamps. Uh, some of the street lamp problems, and, um, the, in the previous talk that you already heard about, and um, because of the lifetime, and people are trying to uh, uh, deploy the street lamps, but actually there are a lot of problems that yet to be solved. And uh, in our project, we will um, work together uh, with the previous one. I think uh, we can solve these uh, problems uh, eventually. Well, I said it came a long way because uh, this is uh, showing you back in 2004, and uh, I was uh, talking to a um, local newspaper, this uh, um, Eastern Oriental. I said um, many of the places are replacing the traffic light with the LED, and then in Hong Kong, it's, uh, it was uh, the very first one in Mong Kok. And then uh, the newspaper uh, got it, and uh, I had an interview with them. So I told them, well, they're, they're, they're trying. They're starting. And that was uh, back in 2004, and almost 10 years ago. Now you go everywhere in, um, in the street of Hong Kong, and I believe it's uh, over 80% of the traffic light uh, have been replaced by LED. And if, um, you pay attention, you will see some of them have problems, and, uh, and there are some, uh, some dust box. And then uh, I was told that a lot of this uh, is not because of the LED, because these are all inorganic LEDs, and it was the circuitry, the, uh, the drivers or the electronics, or maybe the, the capacitor problems um, that you heard about in the past. So you can see that it's not just uh, it's taking a long time for everyone to think outside the box to change. It's uh, also some of the technological problem is still yet to be solved. So this is a, a chart I have been showing for a number of years. And this is a, a comparison, I call it ladonomics. Um, it's the, the, um, 
you might call it the economy of scale or the use in the LED, how it will change the cost of ownership comparing the incandescent light, the halogen light, fluorescent light, and the LED light. And then whenever I update this chart here, and then this is the one number I keep updating. And then these are these are the numbers that has not changed for many years. You can still check it every now and then. It's still pretty much the same number. And this is the last column that, um, that LED efficiency, how many lumens per watt. This has been changing from like back in the maybe uh, seven, six or seven years ago. It's uh, 50 lumens per watt. These I'm talking about commercially available one. And then um, the cost. That's the initial cost of uh, getting a uh, 800 lumen lamp, a light bulb. And um, so this is uh, roughly like a few dollars, and the halogen is $40. And then the LED, um, now you can get one, a relatively good one, is about $80. And uh, of course, uh, you can get ones from uh, Taobao, that's uh, $20, $30, it's uh, much cheaper, uh, but it's not going to last. And these are the ones that I'm uh, talking about, uh, really can last for 50,000 hours, which is uh, around 11 years. And then uh, the way that I compare is uh, by this uh, lifetime, that you don't have to change the LED bulk, but then you have to, the number of uh, bulk that you have to change because of the lifetime of these other light sources. And then this uh, because of the efficiency, and this is the, the power over 50,000 hours that, um, that this uh, light would consume. And then this uh, one here is um, if it's uh, industrial use, then you have to pay the maintenance for changing the light bulb. And so this is the total, the final column is the total column of ownership. So you can see that right now, nowadays, that it will cost you like about $400 to use an LED light bulb. And then um, it's for an incandescent, it's um, close to 5,000 hours. Actually, the power cost, uh, I underestimate because uh, last week you heard that uh, the power of uh, Hong Kong has increased a little bit. And so this uh, number is, uh, should be a little bit higher. So this is uh, um, the train of the LED light output over the time. And uh, so the total light output has been increasing over the years, from the 60s to now is uh, 2013. And actually, these are the actual numbers. And it has, in, it has been increasing faster than the projection. And the cost has been keep coming down. So now it's, a, it's a no doubt that um, in the future, in the next five years, then um, the light, as uh, most of them will be replaced by the LED lighting. It's uh, because of the, um, the saving of the energy and also because of the environmental issue that you can get rid of all the mercury. So this is uh, what our project um, is a focus on. Like now, you have a LED light bulb um, that this is uh, something that uh, the cross section of the one, of the one here that, um, that you can get in the market. And uh, what is in there is um, like the LED light source is uh, usually put here. And then there's all this uh, heat sink material. And then inside here, uh, you can see a lot of the driver circuit. And then there's uh, the AC to DC conversion. And then this is um, the state of the art that is um, made by Creed. Creed last year, they have uh, launched a light bulb that is uh, really like selling like hotcakes at Home Depot. And then um, if you take it apart, if you tear it inside, and then inside here, this is a little uh, PC board that's inside and has all these uh, components and these uh, passive components and the active driver circuit and all this um, together and then they put inside here. And then what we are trying to do is uh, we try to put this everything onto a chip, a silicon chip, and then um, it can 
like we put a little display here because there's a, another project that we're doing. We have been making monolithic uh, micro displays, and then we can integrate all this uh, big size, like this uh, 25 millimeter by 25 millimeter uh, PC board to a small size as a one about one centimeter in diameter. And then the performance that we are projecting to get, and this is the size, and this is the LED light bulb on chip, and then it should get to 180 lumens per watt. Like you saw that on my previous chart, it's about 100 lumens per watt. And then it should be able to give you a, um, around a uh, 60 watt light bulb, 800 lumens, and on, the, on the, your fingertips. And this is uh, our team. Um, then uh, I'm the project coordinator. Again, I cannot do everything. And then um, we have um, people that in different teams, in the IC team, in the, the uh, packaging team, and the system team that uh, we are work together um, to have this uh, system and application and drivers and all this uh, put together. And these are the team uh, leaders, uh, Professor Patrick Yu and uh, Professor Ricky Lee is a 3D integration and packaging. And then uh, myself and uh, Professor Tom Kish from uh, Medicine, and also, um, also Professor Choi at Hong Kong U, we are working together on the materials and devices. And this is uh, one of the um, materials challenge that uh, we have been trying to solve. It's uh, we want to lower the cost. So instead of uh, using sapphire, we have been growing the gamma nitride LED on silicon. And then this is uh, because of the, the uh, huge lattice mismatch and also because of a huge thermal mismatch. And then you um, always you will end up with uh, cracking wafers. And then we have been solving this a problem for the past um, since uh, 2005 for the past um, eight years and then we have a uh, different ways of trying to solve this problems and uh, I will show you one of the our latest examples and then we have this uh, the LEDs the blue LEDs that we were able to grow on silicon and then we transfer on copper and then uh, we have a very high performance LEDs and then we can also transfer this uh, LEDs onto a flash substrate and this is a single LED that can be transferred and then we also use the nano pattern silicon substrates for the growth to do the strain engineering and also to um, to get rid of the cracks and also uh, balance the strain in the in the wafer and then this is um, a system on the chip that we have um, our whole team is working on. And this is um, what we have in our proposal. And of course, uh, this, uh, we will uh, get this um, materialized um, at the end of our project, and hopefully before that. And the concept of this, uh, we try to have, this is a silicon wafer. And then uh, we can have the LEDs that can be flip chipped on the silicon. I'll show you some example. We have done that, um, uh, demonstrated by micro displays. And then we also um, try to integrate this uh, gamma nitride power transistors also on silicon. And we have two ways of growing it, either growing it or flip chip to integrate it. And then this, on this uh, silicon wafer, and we have other team members, um, Professor Sin and Professor Yu. They have been uh, integrating the uh, passive components, like this uh, transformer inductors um, that's uh, integrated on the back side of the silicon wafer. And then we also uh, recently we start working on the capacitors. So what you saw on the PC board in the in the slides um, in a couple slides ago, and we'll get rid of all of them. So it will, like the cost of uh, fabricating this on silicon, as you know, on any integrated circuit chips, it's, uh, it's basically costs nothing. And, and then we also have our uh, packaging expert 
that would uh, help us um, like with the flip chip technology and also this uh, vehicle and how to get rid of the heat when we integrate the uh, different components or the active components and the passive components on uh, everything on the chip. And then we have uh, some of the um, uh, in addition to the concept that we have here, um, we also have uh, filed a few patterns on integrating um, the LED and the drivers and also the inductors and um, the other cap uh, passive components the, the patterns uh, have been filed. So this is uh, some of the um, micro displays that we have uh, accomplished. Uh, there's uh, red, green, and blue. And this uh, micro displays, uh, we call it the LED on silicon, the lattice. And uh, they are individually, individual colors and uh, with the different materials. And this is uh, both of the green and the blue, again, in nitride. The red is a quaternary material. And we have demonstrated 30 by 30 and also 60 by 60. And these are the number of pixels on a monolithic chip. And this is the size, it's uh, 4.3 millimeter by 4.3 millimeter, including the outside, because uh, right now we have to do the wire bonding. And then uh, to drive these um, micro displays, and uh, all these are external uh, drivers, and also the, um, connecting with the computer, having this uh, video, the changing this uh, traffic signs, um, like having this um, HKUST, and the logo, and the, um, and the characters displayed. Um, we have uh, also tried to integrate um, this uh, three color, three different color chips, and then make a uh, projection system. So we have the blue and the green and the red, and we combine these uh, three separate color LED chips, and we have. Um, demonstrate a full color projection display. As you can see from here right now, the people are doing the three LCD displays with a white LED backlight. And with the three individual colors, then uh, you can enlarge this uh, color gamut. And then uh, you can have a sharper uh, display. And also, actually, the most important is uh, you can have a much higher the light utilization efficiency. And I can uh, explain um, a little bit how. And then this is the projection display that we have made uh, using the prototype. We actually just uh, took a regular uh, projector apart and then used the optics in there. But we can get rid of all the polarization optics. We can get rid of all the color filters. And then we uh, combine this uh, uh, three uh, lattice chip and then uh, we can make this uh, uh, display. And then with this projection optics, then uh, uh, you can see um, the size, not as big as this uh, screen here, maybe a quarter of the size that can be projected on the wall. And then at the same time, we are also trying to scale down the resolution. And uh, we have a, a start from a large resolution, a 300 by 300 micron, and uh, down to the uh, 5 micron. And now we are working on the 30 micron size. And this is the flip chip technology that we are using. And uh, then we can uh, increase the resolution. And this is uh, our next generation of the lattice display by um, reducing the pixel size and then decreasing uh, the pitch between the pixels. And then we can increase the resolution. And this is uh, our goal that we want to eventually get to. And then we will combine it with the CMOS, half a micron CMOS technology. And this is uh, it's done in the foundry. And then this is the LED is uh, done at our university. Uh, we have also like, tried to um, push what is this uh, solid bomb, the size that we can get down to. And then uh, we, this is, uh, have been done in the past year. Uh, this is another project that we uh, um, started when this project was started it's, uh, about a year ago. And then we try to grow the direct growth of the hem to the power transistor with the LED on a monolithic chip.
It's uh, different from the flip chip that I was talking about earlier. So on this one here that we start with the LED that is already on the chip on top of that, and then uh, we grow this uh, power transistor on it. And then part of it on uh, one side, we will cover it, and then we uh, later on, we uh, will expose this part, and then have the LED, the lights come out from here. And then the driver will be right next, this driver transistor will be right next to the LED, and then uh, it can actually drive the LED that, um, that I'm going to show you later. So this is the simple, the VDD, the power that comes in, and this is the control signal um, from the HIM transistor, and then this is the LED that giving you the light. And then we were able to demonstrate um, the current and voltage characteristics of the transistor as a, with the light output power of the LED, and this is the VDD, that um, the voltage that is a two, the transistor, and then this is the light output power, and uh, maybe it's uh, easier to show on this uh, video here um, that you can see. Oops. I don't know. It's uh, I checked it. It was working. Um, No. Okay. <laughs> well, that's uh, let's uh, get back. Okay. What I was trying to show here that the, that was a video that um, this is uh, the transistor, the IV of the transistor, and then we can control the output from the LED. Um, that you can see that the light of the intensity, it will increase. So this is the monolithic integrated uh, hemmed and LED that are together. It's uh, shown on this uh, video here. Um, I don't know why it's not working now. It was. And so this is uh, an, another um, project that we have been doing is uh, try to improve um, the gallium nitride quality on the silicon that we have been trying to do. So this is the problem I was talking about. You have a lot of cracks and a lot of the strain management that we were trying to do. And then uh, one student that, um, that we have been working on uh, with this MOCVD system. Oh, by the way, the reason I want to show this, it was uh, because of this old system that we have been using for over 11 years. And we finally, with this project, that we have uh, um, ordered a new one. So this one, we put it into retirement last month because the new one is coming in. Um, so we have a little retirement party for it because it serves us, even though it's, uh, my student didn't want to do that because it really gave them a really hard time working with this. It's a very difficult to work with. It's, um, it's uh, getting old. Anyway, so all this are we saw to work from that uh, MCVD reactor. Uh, we have been uh, like growing this uh, nitride on silicon uh, using this uh, different techniques. And um, we have been able to grow relatively thick um, gallium nitride and then LED on top of that. One of these techniques we have been using is so uh, we incorporate the nano rocks onto this uh, gallium nitride that we grown, that's a two micron gallium nitride, and we want to improve the quality further. So um, we uh, have this ITO on top of that, and then put it into uh, hydrogen chloride. And this hydrogen chloride will um, etch this um, indium oxide, and then what is left behind will be the tin oxide, um, in the nanoscale, and then we use this uh, tin oxide as an etching mask, and then we can pattern the silicon dioxide underneath. And then with the silicon dioxide, and then we can use it as a pattern to continue the growth of the gallium nitride. And then on top of that, with the, the LED we glue, it's uh, a very high quality. So this is uh, some pictures of the nano pattern that we created um, with this uh, technique that I shown in the previous slide. 
and then uh, on top of that, we grow the LEDs on top of it, and then uh, we were able to grow much thicker gallium nitride with the uh, with the strain balancing, and then we. Uh, Again, we transfer this uh, LED from the silicon to copper, and then we package them. And then the performance that we are getting in this uh, blue LED on copper after the transfer, uh, because uh, we use a reference LED without the nano rocks, and then uh, we have this uh, blue LED. It's a, there's a red curve here that uh, is uh, on the nano rocks, and then there's a black curve is uh, after the transfer, and then we were able to. To, um, get the like, drive this uh, LED much much uh, harder to almost uh, 300 milliamp, and we can get up to almost uh, 40 milliwatt with this technique. And we also demonstrate the green color one because the green color is uh, harder because uh, you need to incorporate more indium and then the crystalline quality is uh, requirement is uh, higher. So we were able to uh, demonstrate the green color and then uh, with, of course, the power that we get is uh, somewhat lower and, um, and then but we were able to uh, demonstrate this uh, up to uh, 515 nanometer, this is the wavelength. And then uh, this is showing the crystalline quality is uh, much better with this uh, nano rock technology. And then we pushed the wavelength further, and then we were able to get up to uh, the yellow color, the 565 nanometer. This is a very, very long wavelength. And we were able to demonstrate uh, we were the first one, the uh, multiple quantum well, green and yellow LED that's uh, grown on silicon. And of course, uh, you, get, you see this on sapphire, but on silicon, uh, we are uh, the first one to demonstrate them. And then we benchmark our performance of the LED with the, what was published and uh, on the patent sapphire on the, with the planner uh, technology. And then we are, uh, in terms of power and, uh, and the wavelength, and, uh, we are at the pretty good place compared with the rest of the world. And uh, this is just to summarize um, this particular work here. And then I need to, uh, I'm running out of time, I need to talk about others. Uh, team members' um, accomplishment. And this is the one uh, by uh, Professor Choi and Hong Kong Yu. And then because uh, our main theme is integration. So he has uh, developed this uh, micro lens fabrication technique that will be able to integrate with our LED because we do the flip chip. So they, um, he's uh, able to have this uh, micro lens technology and then it will be on the back side of the sapphire. And then with this um, uh, micro lens technology, and this is the AFM of those uh, micro lens, and then he was able to demonstrate that was no effect on the current and voltage characteristics, but then the output power has, uh, has been able to uh, increase by 30%, particularly at a uh, higher drive current. And this is um, the emission pattern and also with the lens LED. And you can also change the emission pattern by adjusting the size of the, um, of the micro lenses. And then this is the system architecture of uh, what I was talking about earlier. Uh, we have this uh, power management. And this is the LED chip that is a flip chip on the silicon. And then with the driver circuit underneath. And, um, this is also this other project that um, we, some of our team members have been working on for a number of years. It's the backside embedded inductor. So this is what I was talking about. We want to integrate everything in the silicon and then get rid of all the uh, passive components. And we have uh, like file pattern on this. These have been published um, in the earlier this year. And this is the performance of the inductance and the frequency. And uh, one of the reasons that uh, we want to like, have this all integrated is uh, we want to have the driver circuit to drive at higher frequency. And then, uh, but there's an integrated inductor. It cannot give you a very high inductance. So there's a lot of engineering that we have to do in order to get the sufficient uh, inductance and the inductance density and the Q factor in order to have this uh, integrated embedded into the silicon. 
and this is another um, form of the in, um, the inductor that we have uh, demonstrated and published that have uh, already integrated on the back side of the silicon wafer uh, using this uh, low temperature oxide and the plate the copper technique. And at the same time, that we also try to increase the inductance by incorporating magnetic material that inside um, this uh, backside inductor. And uh, we uh, recently we started working on uh, the capacitance also, the integrated capacitors. And then at the same time, we're also uh, working on this uh, circuit, this uh, high frequency switching uh, converters. And uh, why um, we want to do this? Uh, because uh, like, again, we want to get rid of those uh, bulky off-chip capacitors and inductors and also their lifetime were limited. And uh, we'll solve the problems uh, if uh, we have the, all this uh, like integrated in the chip, then we will get rid of all the um, uh, off-chip capacitors and the inductors. And then it's not just lowering the cost and also the size of the PCB. And, uh, and then the driver circuit, then we want to drive it at the higher frequency. And this, uh, then we got to have sufficient capacitance in the inductors. And then we have to design this uh, driver chips that will have the, um, as you try to increase this, then your efficiency will be lower. Uh, then, but we have, um, experts here to solve this uh, problem and uh, we can get much uh, higher switching loss and then uh, while incorporating this um, on-chip capacitor and the inductor. And this is uh, one of the examples of uh, Professor Mock. It's um, also published, uh, it's going to be published this month. And then this is a fully integrated bulk converter. And uh, this is the one that um, he incorporated um, this um, and in the concept I was uh, talking about, and this is uh, using the UMC 0.3 micron technology, and then uh, you, um, he integrated not the back side inductor, but the bond wire as the inductor, that he uh, proved the concept that um, this, uh, we can get rid of this uh, passive inductors. And this is the the performance of the driver circuits that he demonstrated has a very high frequency, 100 uh, megahertz, and then with a very high current, and uh, uh, the current density was almost one amp per millimeter, and the efficiency is uh, over 80%. Um, so this is uh, what I have, and I want to acknowledge the support um, from uh, LGC. Um, welcome to have questions. Great. Thank you, Professor Lau. Okay. So, uh, are there any questions for Professor Lau? Yes. Uh, thank you, Professor Lau. Uh, what would you say is the main um, application for this LED on silicon? Is it for uh, micro display or is it for uh, larger displays? <laughs> It's mainly for the micro display. And, uh, well, if we can improve the quality, then uh, we can make it larger. Right now, it's for the micro display. You can make uh, pick up projectors and, uh, because you don't require the extremely high power LEDs. And then the way that we are making it, and um, because uh, we have these uh, small pixels, then we can drive these uh, pixels with uh, some like driver circuits that maybe uh, um, instead of uh, having like the AC LED that people are talking about, have a big patch that uh, to be light up on one side and uh, and uh, and the other side is off. So we have a smaller pixel. We have more flexibility to do that. So we think that this um, monolithic. Uh, small pixel technology, it can be used for power also. And uh, when we come up with uh, like more um, good driving schemes to do that. So maybe um, one is uh, uh, like emitting a high power and, and the next door neighbor is resting, but these are all small pixels. What limits the pixel size of having the size of the chip? 
on our university clean room. <laughs> So because uh, we are making it in the university, so the yield is not the best. And like for the silicon sea moss, then we can design it very fancy, then we have the foundry to do that. So um, I believe that in the future, there will be LED foundries, and they will have a much better yield than what we have at the university. So when uh, um, we license this technology, then uh, of course um, they will have the LED foundry to do this micro display. But the, like the techniques is all the same. It's, uh, it's like the CMOS, but just uh, nowadays, um, there are also many LED manufacturers, but they are not like operating in the foundry mode yet. But it uh, will be, I believe, in similar to the silicon photonics, and then, and then someday they will have uh, foundries that, they can, uh, that can make this with a much, much higher yield. And for your micro display, what is the viewing angle comparing with the um, RG set or LCDs? It's uh, it's far. And I mean, it it would it would depend on this uh, those um, micro lens that we can adjust it. Then we can incorporate this micro lens. But now it's uh, right on top. Then uh, the viewing angle is uh, very high. Because I saw from your presentation, your viewing angle is about 60 degrees. It's quite low, but if you want to have a display, pur display purpose, you want to have a large viewing angle, isn't it? If it's the view, it's very high. Because uh, what you're seeing, or, uh, that we use a projector, we just uh, take an old projector and took it apart, use the prism inside, and then do the projection. And, and that's the reason. Uh, because we are, we are too cheap to have a custom made a uh, prism for our <laughs> for our system. More questions from the floor? If not, then let's thank Professor Lau again. Thank you.